Brittany here with Brent from Greyhouse Studio and today we're going to share our latest project in our nursery. Brent built an awesome changing table to match our crib and we're going to show you how he did it. We're scrambling to get these projects done and Courtney's been telling me how being pregnant in 100 degree weather isn't fun in Houston but I would say that building a bunch of projects in a 115 degree garage is also not very fun. Yeah, so I've been avoiding being outside or the garage as much as possible, so that's pretty much left Brent on his own in building this project. But she does come and check and make sure I'm not passed out every 30 minutes or so. Sometimes she even brings water. water. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I started by cutting all the boards to length and tried cutting multiple boards at the same time if they were supposed to be the same length. Then I used the table saw to cut the boards to the correct width. Then I cut all the plywood for the whole project down to size. To inset the two side panels made of plywood into the top and bottom rails, I cut a slot in each of the rails, the same thickness as the plywood side and one inch from the bottom of the rail. To start assembling the changing table, I glued the slotted rails to the plywood sides and clamped the boards together until everything dried. I used a measuring tape to straighten the rails to the plywood to make sure it was square before I tightened the clamps down. While the two sides dried, I drilled pocket hole screws in the boards that would go together to make up the front and back frames of the changing table. Then I glued and screwed all the front and back frames together. Once all the sides and base were put together, I used one and a half inch finishing nails and wood glue to assemble the shell of the changing table. Since I wanted the legs of the changing table to match the crib, I made a paper template of those legs and then traced the legs onto the boards that would be the legs for the changing table. Once those pieces were traced, I used the miter saw to cut the angle at the top of the legs so that the legs would mount to the changing table at the same angle. Since the boards I'm using are only 3 quarters of an inch thick and I wanted the legs to be an inch and a half thick, I'm gluing two boards together per leg. I used a router to round off the bottom edges of the legs and then used a sander to prep the legs for paint. Once sanded and ready for paint, I attached them with finishing nails to the bottom of the changing table. After attaching the back piece of masonite and the bottom piece of plywood on the inside of the changing table, I attached little blocks of wood to support the weight of the top of the cabinet. Then I used finishing nails and glue to attach the top to the changing table. The divider that separates the space between the changing pad and the area to store other items is nailed and glued to the top board. After the main part of the cabinet was all assembled, I moved on to the doors and started by cutting each of the slats that would serve as a fake drawer on the face of the doors. By taping all the boards together, it was easier to cut all the pieces at once and make sure they were all the exact same length. Then I glued and clamped the slats to the piece of plywood that was cut to the right size for the door. 
To prep the changing table for the door hinges, I glued a one by one and a half inch board to the inside lip of both sides of the cabinet. This allowed a thick board to screw the hinge into and hold the door securely. Once the door was attached from the inside by screwing in the hinge, I marked the holes for the knobs by making a template out of a scrap piece of wood. Then drilled the holes slightly thicker than the screw for the knobs and attached the knobs. To support the shelf on the inside of the changing table, I glued and nailed a brace to the inside of each side of the large compartment. I used two scrap pieces of wood the same length to make sure that each brace was the same height and the shelf would be level. Then I glued the plywood shelves to the brace and attached a one by one and a half inch board to the front of the shelf to strengthen it, keep it from bowing, and make it look a little nicer. Finally, with the changing table built, it was time for the paint. If you have any questions about this changing table build, be sure to leave them in our comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, click the like button below to let us know. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out StudioGreyhouse.com for more details on this build.